Hello, and welcome to another edition of Ask the Professor, where we respond to your questions on everything from current events to economics to political philosophy, culture, and history. All those things that concern us as citizens. All right, here's one from George, who I should point out is a Christian, so that, that's the, the context in which he's asking this question. Uh, can you tell me what is going on at the Rebel, and can I, in all conscience, support it? George, you ask me a painful question, but a good one and a legitimate one. Recently, I stopped contributing to the Rebel, which I had been doing It Happened to Days for ever since they launched. And I believed in the mission of the Rebel to provide news from a conservative perspective, to challenge conventional wisdom, and to stand up to politically correct bullying. And I'm proud to have been part of that, even though there were aspects of the way the rebel covered events and participated in them that always bothered me. But at a certain point, I felt that the tone was too unconstructive, that the rebel was doing what I call rubbing sores, that they were inflaming emotions, that they were looking for the worst in their adversaries, and that they were not covering the news but trying to be part of it. And I'm all for people taking part in public events, but the press is meant to be describing things. Commentators are meant to be analyzing what's happening. They're not meant to be trying to cause it. They're not meant to be trying to stir something up so they can say, there, see, I told you so. For instance, disrupting a play in order to get arrested or, or, or taken down and then, and then have this be an event in a news story. Yeah, all, the, all this kind of stuff. And again, I don't want to be too negative. Uh, I left friends at the Rebel, though some friends left more or less at the same time as I did, or say with me, but not, not literally as part of one action. I hope they pull themselves together because Canada needs something like the Rebel. I hope this is something they can learn from and correct course, because I don't want to be engaging in the same kind of thing I'm condemning, which is excessive negativity. But it is also the case, and here I'm, George, I'll speak to you as one Christian to another, that we are called upon to try to be better people, that we are called upon to be charitable to others, and that we understand that we are sinners and so are they, and so we're not in a position to drive them out into the desert where they will perish ignominiously. When we argue and debate in public affairs, and sometimes we are outraged, sometimes we are indignant, sometimes we ought to be, but the goal should always be to lead the lost sheep back to the fold, to take people who do not understand what is happening, who are in darkness, and bring them back to the light. Whitaker Chambers talks about this in Witness. I may have mentioned this in an earlier Ask the Professor, but if I did, well, I'll mention it again because I think it's so important. His reluctance to name former associates in the Communist Party who had engaged in espionage, which actually got him in a lot of trouble, he perjured himself to avoid this because he saw how serious the consequences would be and he said, I wandered in the darkness myself so long that I don't want to do anything that would make it harder for someone else to get back to the light. And so when you, when you look at the rebel, this is the question I would ask myself. Is the organization at the moment trying to lead people back toward the light? Is it trying to bring out the best in people? Is it looking at those who believe wrong ideologies and do wrong things and hoping to persuade them to come over to the side of justice and righteousness and charity? Or is it imitating the worst qualities of the people that it most dislikes? My own feeling at a certain point was that it was too close to the latter for me to continue contributing. I hope one day that changes. I'm not saying the rebel should be destroyed. I'm not saying everybody there is evil, far from it. I'm saying they have strayed too far from the path for me to stay with them. But I'm still beckoning, saying, come on, come back here, because we need intelligent conservative commentary. We need the courage it takes to stand up to political correctness. We need the feistiness. But what we don't need is the sourness. We don't need malevolence. We don't need malice toward our adversaries intellectually and philosophically. There's far too much of that. So I'm taking a break from the rebel. I hope it's just a break because I don't feel at the moment that I want to be associated with that tone. And therefore, obviously, my advice to you is urge them to be more elevated, to lift up others, to lift up themselves so that they'll be worthy of your support. Because if they continue to go in the other direction, I think there has to come a point where you say they're not. It's painful. I would rather tell you something else but that is my honest opinion, and if the truth will make you free, we must stand with the truth, even above loyalty. Loyalty is a virtue, but truth is a higher virtue, and the truth is at the moment, they are not a source of light. Okay, and I'd just like to add something that 
even the rebel is not the only possible option out there if you want to support commentary and news analysis that you like. Yeah, that is very true. In fact, I will add as a bit of a sideline, it's amazing how much money conservatives in Canada will give to political parties who I would suggest have been terribly disappointing from the federal Tories to the Alberta Progressive Conservatives to the Ontario Progressive Conservatives and on and how little they give to all those groups that are trying to create a conservative intellectual infrastructure. If the late Andrew Breitbart said that Politics was downstream of culture. We need to change the culture. Now, obviously, my hat is out here. Yes, I would like people to support me because I'm trying to do that. But there are other groups. My friend Danny Hozak out in Alberta with his Economic Education Association. Dave Research, let's do it ourselves. The Think Tanks, you know, the Fraser Institute, the C.D. Howe Institute, and the which smaller is run ones. by my brother. Mm -hmm. um, the Frontier Center, the Montreal Economic Institute. There are so many groups out there, and I apologize if I forgot anybody obvious. There's CARDIS here in Ottawa. The there's the McDonald Laurier Institute. There's the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms. There's the Canadian Constitution Foundation. There are so many groups that really need your support and to whom a small amount will make a big difference. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, look at your budget. Look at what you spend on cable television. If you still have cable television, think about what you spend eating out and ask yourself, if I were just to somehow find $300 a year and then find 15 organizations and give them each $20 a year, how much good might I do? And there is, there is so much that needs doing. There are so many of us who do need support and who I think can make a difference in a positive way. So there is a lot to do out there. But there are things that all of us in good conscience cannot do. So let us try to be a source of light. Let us try to add faith, hope, and charity to the public discussion. Be the change there, you want to see. Be the change you want to see in that direction. And I'm convinced that together we can make the world a better place. All right. Well, thanks for that. I hope that answers George's question. Folks, if you would like to play along and ask your question of the professor, go to the URL on your screen and everything there will be explained. Thanks and see you next time.